Hello everyone. In this session, we will compute the book value per share. To compute the book value per share, you need to understand the statements of stockholders' equity because the book value per share is derived from the statements of stockholders' equity. Now, on the exam, you could be giving that statement and you'll be asked to compute the book value per share. Or you could be giving information that from that information, you can prepare the statements of stockholders' equity in order to compute the book value per share. So in this example, I am not giving you a complete statement. I'm giving you pieces of information which will help you put a statements of equity together because the book value is what? The book value is how much the stock is worth based on the equity, based on the book value of the company. Because how much a company is worth? If you remember the accounting equation, assets equal to liabilities plus equity. So what is the equity of the company? If we rearrange the formula, equity equal to assets minus liabilities. So that's what equity is. Equity is how much is the company worth based on the books, based on the accounting record. So in this session, we will compute the book value per share. Simply put, the stock price of the company, but it's not the market stock price, it's the accounting stock price. So the accounting stock price is based on the company's equity. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. In order to compute the book value per share for this company. What are we giving? Well, we are giving 8% cumulative preferred stock va par value of $100. We have 6,000 shares outstanding. What does that mean? It means we have 6,000 shares of preferred stock. Those shares have a par value of $100 they pay 8% their cumulative. It means they pay $8 per share and we have 6,000 shares. So these shares pay $48,000 per year for the preferred shareholders. And notice the preferred is cumulative. It means if we don't pay the shareholders the money every year, we owe them this money for the future. Although this money is not a liability, the 48,000 is not a liability. Nevertheless, we still owe them 48,000 per year. So we have 600,000 of preferred stock we have common stock, $1 par value. We have 1 million authorized share of which 850 is issued and outstanding. We have 850,000 for common stock. Now, usually the stockholders equity, it will have additional paid in capital, which we assume we don't have. And definitely it will have a retained earnings, which we don't have directly. What we are giving in this example, we are giving net income for 2006, 07, 06 and 07, 05, 06 and 07. So let's start by seeing what we need to do here. So Adam never paid any dividend because they don't have, you know, they did not make the profit. So they, they're not interested in paying dividend yet. So we, we need to compute the book value. The first thing we're going to do is we need to compute retained earnings. What is retained earnings? Well, the company incurred a loss in 20x5, incurred a loss in 20x6 together. That's, that's a deficit of $300,000 between 05 and 06. In 07, the company made a profit of 900,000, which increased retained earnings. As a result, we have retained earnings of 600,000. Now we find out what retained earnings is because we need it. Retained earnings is part of the equity section, which is part of the book value computation. Now, for dividend, we said it's $8, $48,000 per year. And we have to deduct three years. You might be saying why. When you compute the book value per share, if you have a preferred dividend, what you have to do is this. You're going to take total equity. And from total equity, you have to deduct everything that belongs to the preferred shareholders. And whatever is left from equity is for the common shareholders. So why are we deducting three years, although the company did not pay any 
dividend. Well, the assumption here is this, not the assumption. Since this is a cumulative preferred, cumulative means we owe them the money. So if we want to compute what is the value per share for the common stockholders, before you know what the val what's your value, you have to give the, sh the preferred shareholders 144000 Okay, so let's compute now the final retained earnings. Well, we said the retained earnings is 600,000. However, we have to deduct from retained earnings 144. This is dividend and dividend in arrear. We have two year of dividend in arrear plus one year of a current dividend of three years. Therefore, we have to deduct 144, which is 48,000 times three. So the retained earnings that belong to the common shareholders is 456,000. Now we are ready to see how much of equity belongs to the preferred, how much belongs to the common, and from the common we can compute the book value per share. So the preferred shareholders, they have 600,000 worth of preferred stock, it's, it's right here. They have 144,000 of dividend for the preferred, which is we computed here. Total for the preferred is 744,000. The common shareholders, what belongs to them is the common stock, 850, and the remaining retained earning, which is $456,000. In total, the common shareholder gets $1,306,000. All what we have to do now is take this number, the equity that belongs to the shareholder, and divide it by the number of shares issued and outstanding, which is 850,000 shares. Therefore, the book value per share is $1.54. Now, we could also compute, if you would like to, the book value for the preferred stock, 744, divided by 6,000 shares, and this will be the book value for the preferred stock, if you are interested. Now, let's assume the same scenario, except we are be we're going to be adding another complication to this. We're going to assume that the preferred had a call price of 106. What does that mean? It means when we compute the value that goes to the preferred, here we're saying it's $100 par value. What we have to pay is 106. We have to pay them 106%. So how do we do this? Well, remember the preferred gets 144,000 from two years in arrear and the current year dividend. Now what we have to do when we compute retained earnings of 600,000, of the 600,000, we have to deduct the dividend. Then we have to deduct an additional 36,000. Where does this 36, where is this 36,000 coming from? It's 600,000 times 1.06. So the preferred shareholders, they will get 636,000. So there's an, there's an additional 36,000 in case we liquidate, we have to pay them we have to pay the we have to pay the preferred shareholders not one hundred dollar per share. We have there's a call price of one oh six. When we buy it from them, we have to pay one oh six. Therefore, what what's left to the common is four hundred and twenty of retained earnings belong to the common. Let's compute now the book value. The preferred now are six thirty six. The dividend in arrear 144, the total preferred 780. Now again, we can take 780,000 divided by 6,000 shares to find the book value per share. The common, they have 850,000 of common and now only 420 of retained earnings. Why did the retained earnings went down? Well, because we have to pay a premium to buy back the preferred shareholders. Therefore, 850 plus 420, the common, is 1,270,000. Now, if we take this amount divided by the number of shares outstanding, 850, we know that the book value per share is $1.49, which is lower than the prior computation. And I hope this makes sense. Why is it lower than the prior computation? Because this scenario says when you pay the preferred shareholders, you have to pay them a $6 premium per share. You have to pay them 106. And where do you pay this money from? Well, it comes out of retained earnings. So it's going to reduce retained earnings. Retained earnings was reduced by 36. The preferred stock were increased by 36. Therefore, the book value of the preferred stock will go up. The book value of the common stock, we saw it went from $1.54, I believe. Let me go back, $1.54 to $1.49. And this is how you compute the book value per share. Now, you might have different scenarios, of course, other than these scenarios. You could have different scenarios. Make sure you are comfortable with the basic. And what you should do now, go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, MCQs, true, false, additional practice that's going to help you understand this topic. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Computing the book value per share is an important topic on the CPA exam. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.